Okay, I'm back. I'm gonna make um, French lavender soap again, but today I'm making a big batch. So I'm gonna show you how I make soap in my largest mold, which is here. This is the big ones I used to use years ago. If you, you've watched me make soap for years, these are the molds that I used to use years ago and I always made big batches. I don't know why I stopped. I think because I wanted to make so many different small batches and test fragrances and things like that. But this one is going to be French lavender again because the last batch just, it always sells really, really fast. I don't know why I make small batches of the best sellers. I don't know why which, but this one I did. So this time, I'm going to do a similar pour to the way I made spice strudel soap, which um, was a video I put up the other like a couple of weeks ago, maybe, um, which is here. I did it in my little slab mold. So this was let me just make that's in focus. This was spice strudel in the little mini slab mold, but these ones that I'm making today will be my longer but more squat bars. So. Micah's today, I'm going to use Micah Mama, surprise, surprise. They are my favorite supply because they're in the UK and she has a really good range of colors. So I'm going to use hot purple. And then I'm going to use black grape, which is a dark purple, but I'm going to mix in a little bit of uh, black magic. So there's my two purples and I'm going to use some titanium dioxide in there. So we're using a 50% water discount. So hopefully this will be okay. My oils have been cooling right down for quite a while. So I'm just going to bring you in. We'll, well, I'm going to mix the soap and then bring you in because I'm using my big pot. You won't be able to see the um, soap and the light, the oils and the light mixing together. Jesus Christ. Blooper reel. Okay, five to one. I'm hungry. That's what this is. I can't talk. Okay, let me get this made and then I can eat my lunch. Okay, I just need to separate off. Let me use that one again. I'm just going to use my lye bowl as well as this one. So I want two colours and then the base I can use the pot for the colour rather than using another bowl. Put these to the side. Now this time before I add the white i'm gonna to wait to add here i go again i can't talk i'm gonna to wait to add the white because i don't want i don't want i don't want i don't want i only want a bit of white anyway let me just pour some more of that off yeah i don't want to have it thicken up on me is what i'm trying to say so first of all i'm gonna get the colours in. So here's black grape. So I'm going to do two scoops of black grape. I want this colour to stand out pretty good, you know. And I'm going to do one scoop of black magic. So we get a nice dark purple. And then in the other one I'm going to use my, what's it called? What's it called? Hot purple. And this one. So hot purple would have one, two, three. So they've got the same amount in both sides. And then I'll leave the white and do that one in a second. So also, what have I got here? 120. Putting in my essential oil into these. I can use that in there. A bit more. Of course, the essential oil will make it uh, thinner as well because it's just lavender oil and it never thickens up, which is a really good thing. Just get that in there so that when I stick blend in a minute, so I'm just going to stir them in. And then I'll stick blend just to get it properly incorporated. But if I stir it, it just means that I won't have this thicken up on me too quickly. Because that's the last thing that I want to happen. <laughs> so I'll just mix in a bit and then those lumps we can get with the stick blender. 
and this will really bloom the colour as well when I stick blend it. I just want to get it in there a bit. Okay, and this is our darker purple. So we haven't been doing much this weekend. We took last, like last week I took a few, well two days, I took Thursday and Friday off work and then I'm back in today and then we go on holiday in a few weeks so I need to just get my autumn stock made and then I can have a break, a proper one, but I might have another day maybe this week to just chill because I haven't had a break properly for a while. I'm alright, like I'm just getting on with stuff and it was nice to have a four day break. So I had like Thursday, Friday, Saturday, Sunday, which was nice and rare. But um, yeah, I could do with doing it a bit more. <laughs> so let me just stick blend these colours in. Slowly. in these bowls. Last week I made a sparkle box. It was very nice to use the big mould again and have that much soap on hand rather than think, oh I'll have to make that again soon. I really, oh, you know, it's nice to just get stuff made and know that you haven't got a really mess making it again for a while. So I'll just put those to the side a minute and this will probably be quite a fast pour once I'm ready because of that white. So I've used some water this time with my TD. Okay, that'll do. So let's get to pouring before it all goes wrong. I'm gonna bring you in so you can see. Okay, dookly, so let's get the purple in. Save some for the top in a minute. Then some white. I'm going to let it go wherever it wants to because that's the beauty of doing it this way. Like I was mentioning Pasha Soap last week, how they do theirs. I just love it. Makes it just really pleasurable to do. I'm not going to mess with the chopstick or anything, I'm just going to leave it to make its own design. And then we might do something pretty on the top at the end, maybe. We shall see. I just wanted to come on and show you how I use the big mould again because it's been a while since I've done a video with this and it's not that often that I use it. I do, I've do. i got another different large mould that I use when I make White Witch but what I was doing with these moulds, this one I'm using today, is using them in the window for display and I haven't got any more made so I've, that's why I've not uh, been using these to make soap. But I thought if I take one out change the display in the window then at least I've got one I can use when I need to get a big batch made so that's why I've cranked it out today and I'm not really sure what I'll do with the top yet probably like I normally do with the spoon and then um, 
some lavender flowers as usual okay so that's all the soap <laughs> just got to wait for that to set up a little bit before I can do the thingy, the top. So I'll turn this off a second, tidy up a minute and then I'll be back to show you the next bit. Okay, so I'm just going to bring it over to the middle. I have to do this pretty fast because it's thickened up quite a lot. Okay, so I've got to go off to the wholesaler this afternoon. I just decided that's what I would do because I've run out of like tissue and what else do I need? Piping bag for this week's whip soaps I've got to make and um, what else do I need? Olive oil, sunflower oil, I'm just running out of my soaping oil so that's not good. <laughs> so that's thickening. Um, in there. So yeah I should do that this afternoon. I can take the dog there and give her a walk on the way back. This is French lavender so I'm going to leave that to set up and I'll be back to cut it in the morning. Yeah, my line didn't go quite to plan there, but it ain't no biggie really. When it's cut, it'll be fine. Okay, I'll see you tomorrow. Ta ta. Good morning. Right, we're going to cut old French lavender. So, my old molds that I made years ago with clips so makes it really easy to get the soap out the only thing is is I put my block of wood like that like this block of wood should have sat inside so that the hinge wouldn't sort of put my like the hinges are on the bottom so when I make the soap I have to put it like that so the hinges aren't making this flow forwards but that's okay it's better this way so it stops any leakages. So, okay. Ew! Okay. Whew. What we can do, I'm just going to take this and I'm going to weigh this to see how much I get by using that discount. I've got like a silicone sheet here on the bottom that I cut to size and those are just baking sheets that you can get on Amazon just so that I have a nice smooth bottom <laughs> and that's smooth ass smooth ass 8.95 kilos are in there so yeah the other one I do is 10 kilos when I use the same mould but up the recipe so that I cut five logs so this is a bit different because I wanted the wider bars not the thinner bars okay let's see oh nice so there's the inside there It really hardens up quick using that water discount. Look at that, that's come out really pretty. So no need for any messing with a chopstick, no need for messing with anything when you make soap like that. You just pour it in. It's not really even, well it's kind of a drop swirl, but just letting it flow and go wherever it wants to. And I, I like that, that's cool. Okay, and I've got a nice side strip for some samples there, which can be cut in half again because that's quite a thick chunk. But that's good. So, there we go. So, they do look 
pretty snazzy with that pour. Oh, yeah, they do not. So, oh God, they smell so good. I've just been out this morning, so I went to the gym today. I went back and I haven't been in for a number of weeks. So I thought, get in there, make the effort, because it always makes me feel better when I do go. So that's what I did. And I had a really good workout. And then I've just walked the dog in the sunshine. I've just cleaned out the back in the workshop and cleaned all the toilet and the kitchen and everything. So, oh, I'm feeling holier than thou. <laughs> Oh, coffee, I need that today. That's the only thing about going to the gym in the mornings. I'm really, it will get to this afternoon and I will be absolutely shattered. But it's worth it because it's really good for your mental health and it's really good for your body, isn't it? So I'm gonna keep doing it. Try and get back into it like I did before because I just feel lazy, you know? I feel lazy by not going and I'm not lazy because I do go out with the dog a lot and I walk a lot and you know but then that's only twice a day and it's a dog walk and I'm not exactly over exerting myself you know I'm not running with the dog so the difference there is that at the gym you've got no choice you know you're there to work out you're there to do something about yourself whereas on a dog walk it's just a leisurely stroll you know so it's not the same it's like People always say, oh, I work really hard. And I think it's not the same. I work really hard. I burn calories all day, but I eat too. <laughs> it's not the same. People think, oh, it's the same. Like if you if you work really hard at your job, if it's a physical job, I mean, it, you know, it does make a difference, but it's different. I think it does, it matters with the mental state as well, with losing weight. So when you're going to the gym, you're going there for that reason only. You're not going to work, you're going to actually work out. So you're going to really push yourself further than you would if you were at work. When you're at work, you think, oh, I'll just have a sit down. I'll just have a rest. Well, you don't do that at the gym, do you? <laughs> That's nice. Look at that. Okay, so let's just cut this one. So something that I've planned on doing and have been doing over the last I think two weeks since the last full moon and since the start of this new moon I get an email from a tarot reader called Biddy Tarot I use Biddy Tarot quite a bit for you know learning about tarot and which you know what the cards mean and that kind of thing so the email came through the other day to use the lunar cycle for business and how to help your business by working with the lunar cycle. So when the moon is dark and it's, there's, you know, you have a three days of darkness, that's a time to really sit and not do too much, have a rest, you know, for the three days. I mean, work, but tie up loose ends, that sort of thing. And then when the new moon starts, you start making plans for what you want to do that month. And I've done that with what I want to do for the autumn release. And then as it's waxing and we're coming up to the full moon, you're putting all of those ideas and all of those thoughts into practice. So as we're gearing up to the full moon, you're going to reap what you sow. So I've been doing it and I feel really organised. I know this might seem, sound a bit all hoo ha, but it's really not. It really does make a difference to actually take control of how you go about your business. And I'm really, really loving it actually. I was just thinking when I read it, I was like, that's not a bad idea. And I thought, let's do this. So I did. And I put my plans into action. I've done my spreadsheet of what I want to make this month and I'm on it. <laughs> So it's really, really good. It's like if I have lists all the time anyway, but to actually know that you're up against some sort of deadline towards the full moon, I mean, don't think I'm crazy or anything. I'm not crazy, but, but it definitely makes a difference to how I'm performing, you know? So we were talking to a friend who came in to see us the other day. Matt was here and we were having a chat. And I said, if you don't, if like our bodies are made up of 60% water, so if you don't think the tides and the planets make a difference to the way you feel, 
then I'm, I think you're wrong. <laughs> you might not be. You might not need to think about these things, but if you're on this sort of a path like I am, you might think about these things and think, actually, yeah, it does make a difference, you know? The planetary action definitely makes a difference to us. And it's like whether you're just aware of it or not. And when you're not, you sort of blame other things or, you know, like you're not sort of in tune with the planet then. And you've only got to look up and see that we're all connected to the stars and the universe and, the, you know, the way the moon goes around us. It's just like it makes a difference to our bodies, so it makes a difference to our mental clarity. Anywho, I'll let you know how I get on over the next few months and see if I'm productive, as productive as I am now, because I'm really quite enjoying this. Anyway, hang on. Two, four, six, eight, ten, eleven. So I'm going to get 44 bars out of these batches. What I think I'll do next time is just lower the recipe down, because this is just a little bit too tall, so I just want it to be a bit lower. So if I lower it by another kilo, we might get somewhere. We shall see. I'll try it for the next one. So trial and error, trial and error. But the soap's come out nice. And I'll leave pictures at the end of this one. And I'll see you for the next one. I don't know what I'm going to do next. I might just film some of the whip soap, like I said. But we shall see. Okay, I'm going to go and take a little rest. And get this uploaded. See you later.